Hi everybody, this is Jess and today I'm going to show you the Creativity in Motion card that I made using the Hippo Stamps. So these are the Safari Animals in the Creativity in Motion set. And this Hippo, they just they, he cracks me up. Wait till you see him in motion. So this was my first sample that I made with him. And uh, it's a different, first of all, yes, it's a different spin on using the transparency sheets. I think that our first instinct is to glue the transparency sheet to the frame and then slide the image out on white cardstock. I kind of switched that and I am sliding the transparency sheet. And look at him waving. Oh my gosh, so he's dancing. This just cracks me up. So as you slide the transparency over, you're revealing the stamped image on the inside. And then he can just give a one-handed wave. Look at his little feet moving too. Cracks me up. So that's a version. Uh, instead of pulling out the white stamped image, pull out the transparency. So I, I kind of got a 50-50 feedback on this. Some people prefer the white image to slide out that you stamp. And uh, some others said that this looked pretty cool. So there's our little hippo in motion there. And this is just a different color scheme from the little paper pad that comes in the set. Cute little diamond prints there and some more bold colors. And he kind of looks black, but he's actually sapphire blue. So same thing. And I just love how much motion this one has. He's adorable. So I'm going to put a different color combination scheme together for you and show you how I did this. So the card concept. Uh, those of you that have been around the block might still have this in your stash, our Originals Card Confidence Program. I have to admit, some of these most of these ideas in here are just timeless. And I come back to this and use it for my ideas. We had... If you have never seen this before, this was our, our first card confidence program. We have Make It From Your Heart now. So we had different size cards to start with and a couple different series, too, that I've added. So the card concept is, is here called Stand Tall. And I love the usage of pattern paper behind the image here. So the measurements for your pattern pieces are here it's three and a quarter by two and three quarter you need two of those pieces and then three and a quarter by one and three quarters and you need two of those pieces so speaking of our originals card confidence program this kind of cracked me up with seeing all of the the quote new slimline card ideas and that just made me laugh because once upon a time back in 2002 maybe 2003 we had a whole section dedicated to eight by three and a half size cards. So totally fun. What's old is new again, right? Okay. So I have just a couple things prepped. You don't need to see me cutting paper and gluing absolutely everything down. But what I like to do with this concept is lay my pieces down without glue first, just to gauge my spacing. So there's your two and three quarter by three and three quarter and one and three quarter by three and a quarter. Those are your pattern pieces here. So when you have this nice even border around the edge and, and I'm one to just eyeball it. I, I don't think that you can afford to be a perfectionist with this kind of hobby because you'll, it's supposed to be stress relieving, not stress inducing, right? Works for me anyway. I know I have some of my customers that are kind of perfectionists and if something is just not right, it drives them batty. Where I say, hey, it's homemade. You know, let, let the randomness of your humanity come out. If you make a little fudge, you can cover it up maybe with a button or a 3D embellishment. There's way to fix your fudges. But anyway, line it up without glue first to gauge your spacing and then glue those pieces down. So this is from that 6x6 paper stack that comes with the Creativity in Motion bundle. 
and I'm a stand-up stamper I have to kind of get my bird's eye view there so nice and even looks fine I have uh, used up some lemonade cardstock and some silver glitter paper as the background to my hippo on this card and I'm going to glue this down a little bit towards the bottom because I want to save room at the top for my message all right so next up what I'm going to do I cut a frame out of bluebird cardstock and I'm going to use our quarter inch thin foam tape for this and it pretty much fits exactly I'm going to turn it over and double check. I think that is good enough. And you're covering three sides with this. Let me check and see anything is showing through. Nope. Looks good. And down the long side. This is actually the first time I'm using the thin foam tape. I'm a huge fan of 3D foam tape. I love the pop-up stuff. So thin foam tape, I was like, eh, why do we want it thin? But uh, this actually works really well with this because for these to slide, you don't need a lot of height. You don't need a lot of space for that. So the thin foam tape is, is just good enough. So three sides. With that foam tape there, let's peel that off and stick it. So it's been interesting to hear feedback about these stamps and these transparency sheets that um, I gather some of you, it really hurts your eyeballs. And I get it. I understand that. Um, I spent an entire Sunday prepping some ideas, and I honestly had to take an Excedrin. My eyes were buggy. So, <laughs> it's not meant to be stared at all day long. We can take it in small doses, right? All right, there's my transparency film. Our little hippo, I stamped him in Bluebird to match, and you're just going to plop that down right inside the frame there. And when you, you've heard this already now, when you stamp your image, you want to make sure that those lines in the stamp are perfectly vertical so let me pop that up put some glue in there using our stitch rectangle dies that's pretty convenient I'm just gonna lift that open edge up and make sure that the edges aren't sticking up He's in there, in that little well. All right, let's test this out. I'm going to tuck that underneath that opening. He moves! All right, super duper. So there's a little tab here. Cut that out in cranberry, put the slide on it. And I'm going to move this aside and put this on the white paper behind me. What I do for this is um, I put a little, this is a clear drawing glue. I put it, I tried to put it down on one of the black lines. And then I'm going to look at the, the black lines and the clear lines and try to make that straight. And I try to maintain that when I'm cutting that transparency film, too. So I'll hold this up so you can maybe see what I mean, that you want to keep it even. So just glue that, put some glue on that black line, and this is going to dry clear, so that's not going to matter. And just eyeball it and cut off those edges. So you need that little extra overhang to grab onto when you're sliding it. I learned that the hard way. My first card that I made, I just made it flush with the window and there was nothing to grab onto. All right, so there he is. And now we have something easy to grab onto. Oh, he's so cute. Too cute, too cute. 
All right, and the little message, hip hippo hooray. We're gonna dovetail the images. If you haven't seen this uh, piece of cake, you're gonna cut a center slit and then corner to corner. Same thing here, center and then corner to center. And that's how you get a nice, even, easy dovetail. And we're gonna adhere that to some lemonade Use up some old stash here. Now, because I have this curve, this little banner curve, um, I'm going to show you how to do that easy peasy. When you glue this down, I'm going to coax it into the shape that I want around my fingers so that there aren't going to be any uh, buckles in the glue adhering the white to the yellow. So I'm just kind of coaxing it with my fingers, and you know, that could be good enough as far as your shaping goes, but um, it's nice to just curl it around something round like a pencil or I'm gonna use my good old piercing tool. So you're gonna just curl one end around a pencil, piercing tool, just start curling it one direction and then curl the other side in the opposite direction. So one gets curled forwards and one gets curled backwards and just straighten it out a little bit. I don't want it that curly. So there's our cute little banner. And yeah, if you mail it, it's going to get squashed a little bit. And then I'm only going to put glue on the, the end that is going to actually be sticking to the paper right above it there. Now if you wanted to, you could put some, so, oops, stick on there. You could put some three-dimensional foam tape underneath this side to make sure that it's sticking onto something. So there's our cute little hippo. He's very festive in, in these primary colors. Super cute! But um, using up some old stash here, Central Park sequins. Anybody have some of these floating around? I just looked in my stash and saw that these would be the perfect color scheme. And of course, you know, things look nice in threes. So we'll just add a little bit of cluster at the top and the bottom. Make sure you grab that sticky. Sometimes they have a tendency to pull off without the little sticky dot. And there you have it little bit of bling on there. So I hope you like that idea. Super cute. Thanks for joining me. Bye.